Cameron, what is going to happen to someone who not necessarily is having all their teeth taken out, but say we've had an accident and perhaps we've we've knocked the front of our teeth, or the front of our mouth, and maybe we've lost three or four um, teeth at the front. Are implants still a viable option for that kind of situation? Absolutely. So if you're missing multiple teeth, you really have three long-lasting options. Okay. Um, and I'll, I'll go from what I recommend first, first. First would be implants. Now that can be multiple implants. Let's just say for argument's sake, you're missing three teeth. Okay. It could be two implants with a bridge over top of them. Uh, that would be ideal. Okay, you can also say I want to do a, a long bridge. You're going to be involving multiple teeth on both sides if you're missing three teeth like that. Yeah. Or you can do a, a partial denture, something that you put in, you take out. Um, that's also in the order of who's happiest. People that are the happiest people we see are the ones that get it fixed with the best solution. You know, implants that are stable, it doesn't involve the rest of the teeth, and it just stays there. Um, bridges are also a good option. The the longer the gap, the harder it is to do a bridge uh, just because of the so, physics of it. So what do you mean when you say a bridge? Is it like a piece of metal, for example, with the teeth attached to that? Uh, sort of. So you, you say a simple conversation, what most people are familiar with, you're missing a tooth, okay. and then we shave, shave down the teeth on both sides of the gap, Right. And then we cement a bridge and it's all one unit, but it relies on those two teeth okay. to replace the one. Okay. So that's why you're involving other teeth to fix the problem of the missing teeth. Yeah. So there's always some pros and cons to that. With trauma, you just got to figure out what's best. Right. Most people that are missing teeth, you know, it's, it's from some oral health habits that weren't the best, maybe when they were kids or, you know, yeah. they, they've gotten better, but they lost it for a reason, right? And so involving other teeth to fix the problem you had with yeah. other teeth yeah. isn't always a winning solution. I mean, if you had a hard time taking care of the first ones, are you going to take care of the next ones any better? Chances are, possibly not, you know. And, and it's harder to, to floss around, any, to take care of anything foreign. Right. But especially when it's glued in there like that, like a bridge involving multiple teeth, it's going to be harder to floss. And are bridges typically with multiple teeth, are they glued into place? So you're not sort of popping them out like a denture every night? That, that would be what you know, most people call them a denture. We call them partial dentures because it's repla replacing part of your, your mouth. Um, so, yeah, those are two very different things. One is it's glued in, you never take it out. The only reason it would ever be taken out is if it failed or you got a cavity on one of the teeth supporting it and you have to do something about it. And that's that's one of the disadvantages of the bridge yeah. is you go in, it's still a significant investment in your mouth to do a bridge right. and then you have a cavity on one of the teeth supporting it. Yeah. Well, now you may need to replace the whole thing. Oh Instead of if you've got a couple implants and there's an issue, those can usually be retrieved. They're retained by screws so you can go in, you can clean it up. It may not be pain-free or, or it's still a... a another step, right. but again, long-term wise, the implants are going to cost you less. In the long run. They may cost more up front, mm -hmm. but in the long run. And I think also people are going to be happier, don't you? I mean, especially if it's the front of your mouth, you've got to have something, you know, nice going on. Absolutely, and I, and I should say, now there are people that are happy with all three options. Right. You know, you meet people that have them and that love it. Just right. from our perspective as dentists of what we see, the happiest ones are the ones that go for what is the best long-term fix. Right. They can eat like they always did, they can keep them clean, they have fewer issues. That's why long, long run, implants are going to be yeah. better. And what I'm thinking at the moment is just because something's cheaper up front does not necessarily mean that that's the best option. I mean, you, this, is, this is something that you're investing in. You're investing in your smile, which is the first thing that people see about you. You're investing in being able to eat, which to most of us means quite a lot. Yeah, well, and we all eat every day, <laughs> right? right? And so, so you wouldn't skimp on, for example, we were talking about if you were buying a car, you wouldn't necessarily go out and and get something that the brakes weren't functioning or you know something else major was going on you would make take the money and make the best investment that you could perhaps the cheapest option is not always the best option sure i mean we want to make sure whatever we do whatever route someone decides to go that it's going to last that's what that's what we care about is that right. whatever we do for you you're investing your resources in your in your smile in your ability to chew. we do it right yeah. and yeah, we also want it to last the longest. Right. So I'd prefer that we fix this once and we never have to touch it yeah. again.
Well, I mean, it is an investment in yourself, and sometimes we forget to do that. We're, you know, looking after our children, our parents, or whatever. You forget to invest in yourself, and I, I think perhaps of a car. If you went to buy a car, you wouldn't necessarily buy the cheapest car because it might be a clapped-out old piece of, you know, junk. The brakes may not work, the electrics may not work. So sometimes we need to think of our our own well-being is that we want to put some money sometimes into what's going to be the best for us and what's going to last the longest not the cheapest absolutely and obviously it's a very individual decision right. but you know we can help you or you, you need to discuss that with your dentist what's your individual situation how are the rest of your teeth what what other issues are you dealing with or, you know there's a lot of things that go into that yeah. to make what's the best decision for you that is going to last also to meet your expectations and right. satisfy you because right. you and I may buy different cars for different reasons right. but I feel responsible to make sure you know what's the best right. and let's work from there so that at least we know that we're all happy and we were well informed in what we decided to do okay. And we're able to make an intelligent decision because none of us want to walk around looking like toothless people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, tell us where we can find Aspen Dental, Dr. Cameron, and, and how does this process get started? Yeah, so it starts with a phone call, okay? 753 uh, 4400. You set up an appointment so that we can sit down, maybe take some records, and, and have the discussion. What are your priorities? What are your needs? And what, are you, what do you want? Okay. So that we can then help you see which, which of these options is best and how it can work for you. Okay, so you come into Aspen Dental. They're not going to talk you into anything. They are going to sit and discuss with you what's the best option, right? Absolutely, okay. yeah. So Aspen Dental, if you need a bridge, or an implant or, or anything of that nature, come in and see Dr. Cameron and his staff here at uh, Aspen Dental. Thanks, Dr. Cameron. Thank you.